Say hi, Jon. Hi, 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 hey. Today we are in Tavira. So the best place to start this little vlog is of course at the main square of the city. Is it heavy? It's so heavy, I'm shaking. <laughs> so of course the best place to start this vlog will be at the main square of the city, which is Praça da Republica, because this is a monument of when the first king of Portugal took over this entire area from the Muslims. Did you get that from Wiki? I got it from Wiki and from a link that one of you guys sent to me. So, kind of. I hope it's true. So the main goal of today's video is to find out if Tavira is the most charming city of the Algarve, because as we've already mentioned in our previous Algarve vlogs, we wanted to use our trip to Algarve to find the authentic and charming spots and uh, you guys have been uh, saying that you, had, you gotta go to Tavira, it's the most charming town of, of Algarve. So that is what we are going to find out today and uh, I think we are already close to just saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Bastost. Bastost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to the game tonight. La 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 la! Buzz, buzz. Well, you already saw that. So right now we are at Ponto Romano, which is the Roman bridge that crosses the river of Chilao. The weird thing about this bridge is that it's actually not built by the Romans, but it's built by the Portuguese king. One of the things we like the most about Tavira, though, is that you got the architecture of the Arabic people and... Uh, Hey there. Hola. Pumba? Hola. Pumba, that's such a good name. You have like a mixture of the Roman architecture and the Arabic architecture. And the Roman architecture is characterized by the tiles, where the Arabic uh, architecture is more flat on top. And that was the same in Oliao, which was 100% Arabic. And that's where you have like all the houses were. Oops. <laughs> That's where all the oh, it's so weird. <laughs> all the houses <laughs> and all the houses in Liao were flat, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like you. right now at the Maurice castle here in Tavira. One of the things that is so odd about this castle and many of the other castles here in Portugal is that they pretty much survived the earthquake in 1755, which is so strange. I mean, how come all the castle is still in pretty all right condition? It's insane, the craftsmanship that must have been available back in the days. But that's what I've always been saying, you know, back in the day, they cared about architecture. It was like the aesthetic pleasing nature of beautiful architecture was something that made everyday life better and you know these days people don't care about architecture or at least not on a mainstream level because you see so many things being built that it's just well we've talked about this many times but if a new earthquake were to hit you know Algarve and Portugal again they would probably just build uh, glass buildings uh, with uh, grey... How on earth can you ever accept that to be built in such a classic and elegant neighborhood? It really um, hurts my feelings. It was actually at the Algarve that the epicenter of the earthquake back in 1755 took place. I didn't know that until now. 
I thought it was only around Lisbon, uh, but apparently it was most of Portugal. Also, since there were so many of the other buildings here in Tavira being smashed over by the earthquake, I actually have to do a little congratulations to the Portuguese, because when they rebuilt this city, which actually used to be much bigger, but, but they rebuilt a part of the city, and they rebuilt it with the charm of the Portuguese buildings without destroying the history of the Roman architecture and the Moorish architecture, which I really like. They even kept two mosques here, and they kept all the churches that were built by the Romans. So the Portuguese really embraced the history and the culture of the area that they are in, which I like because it's so important to what Portugal is today. <sighs> Tasty. Oh, it's so hot. So one of the things I like the most about Tavira is that you don't get the super touristy feel here. You don't see vast amounts of loud families as you would do in Olhau or Albufeira. Uh, people who come here seem to be elegant. Uh, it's, it's, it's people who aligns with the charm of the, of the city. You just don't see the same big kids family who only go to Algarve for, you know, laying on the beach. People here come to appreciate the, the charm and the architecture and that's something that I love. But I think this city also attracts people who love the culture because you have a very, very rich culture in this city due to the influence by so many different uh, empires. It was even established 800 years before Christ, where there was colonies here. So it has a rich history, which also reflects in the entire city. And I think that is what attracts a different kind of um, audience. And it isn't really a city that invites you to bring your kids here because it doesn't have any water parks or beach or anything here. You would have to go out to the Ilias. But you can actually take the boat to the... Um... Yeah, you can. You can take the boat out there. So I think if you are a family with kids you will, and you still want the charm, Liao is better. But if you are a couple traveling together, I would all, every day, I would say this area. And I have a bit of a fun fact brought to us by one of our subscribers, Joanna, who told me that this city is the city with the highest amount of churches within the area. It has 31 churches. 31! 31! Amelia? What are, what are you doing now? We are exploring the the culture, the rich culture. This, of this. is this is very very. Um, it's an Algarve Algarve handcraft. It's very Portuguese. Este é muito bom. Do you want to carry that around now? <laughs> Who do you think buys uh, road maps these days? All people would probably buy it. <laughs> Don't you think? A road map. <laughs> that is actually cool. Like it would be funny to like go on a on a, a road trip and only use an analog map. Do you know what would be fun to buy one of these and then frame them, and then put in all the places that you have been. But yeah. I have to say that I really like getting decorative items for your house, different places where you are vacationing or visiting, items that will remind you of the place and the time in a specific area, because it also adds personality to your home. So I think this was a really good purchase. Also, we paid 22 euros for this. Tavira is charming in the daylight, but it gets better at night because everything calms down, people go out to have lovely dinner, 
And uh, this is one of the places we had dinner yesterday. And the atmosphere here at this square is tremendous. Uh, I think this is probably my favorite area of Tavira. This restaurant and another one called Degusta are supposed to be the two best ones, but Degusta, it's impossible to get a table there. Guys, we... Um, the vlog has come to an end. Yeah, and fittingly enough, we are wrapping it up with a shot of this uh, beautiful uh, minimalistic church, almost, I'd say. Santa Anna. A Santa Anna, Igreja Santa Anna. A beautiful church, one out of 33 here. 31. 31. 31! But uh, yeah, this was our uh, tour of Tavira, and uh, obviously, this town has a lot more to offer, but there's only so much we can do. This is a place that I wouldn't hesitate uh, coming back to. And the best part about it is it's two and a half hours drive from Lisbon. So you yeah. can even go on like a weekend trip here yeah. in the winter time because Algarve is quite warm in the winter time as well. Thank you so much for watching guys. Yeah. Até logo. Até logo. Ciao, ciao.